When I get back to the room, Yoru's asleep. Her lips are at the odd sort of volume, where they can neither be called thin nor thick. I can't help but touch them. My fingers leave a tawny trail. Maybe it's mud. Maybe it's soot. Maybe it's blood. Gross, wash your hands first. I think this chilly, clean room is a stark contrast to me. I feel out of place here. I'm filthy from crawling on the floor through the fire. I still feel hot. Only now do I notice the burn on the base of my neck. Guess I'll go take a bath. Maybe that'll lighten my mood. That must mean my mood is bad. I suppose I do take a bath whenever I'm in a bad mood. When I take off my clothes and timidly give them a smell, they definitely stink, like a flea market of bad smells. Ugh, I whisper to myself as I toss every last article of clothing into the washing machine. I then head to the narrow bathtub of my modular bathroom and twist open the hot water faucet. Crap. I curse my own foolishness for not drawing a bath first as I shiver in the cold bathroom with my clothes in the washing machine. If I had filled the tub first, I may have just jumped in as is, but as it stands, it just feels kind of wrong to get into a half-filled tub. I feel cold. Wait, I've got bath towels, don't I? I turn around and look at the shelf behind me, but then the bathroom door opens. Wearing her pajamas, Yoru looks this way in surprise. Gross. Whoa! I grab the bath towel on top of the shelf and hide my unsightly self. We may be roommates, we may sleep in the same bed, but we've still got boundaries. And it's Yoru of all people. How can I be comfortable showing myself to her? You're taking a bath too, Sayako? That's unusual. Well yeah, I have to every now and then, at least. I got a soily taste in my mouth as I was sleeping, and so I realized that I haven't br been brushing my teeth lately. So I should probably go do that. Brushing your teeth is important, isn't it? Um, yeah. Apparently your teeth will rot if you don't brush. Huh? That's kind of scary. I kind of like these awkward conversations we have. It's familiar and relaxing, like a pair of shoes you've broken in. I got a little dirty myself, so I need to go clean up my body. There's something I'd like to talk about once I'm done taking a bath. She caught me by surprise, but this could actually be a big chance for me now that I think about it. It's almost dawn, our obligatory curfew, where ghosts cannot maintain consciousness. What I have to tell Yoru isn't easy to talk about, and I don't know how to follow it up once I'm done. That's why it's reassuring that I can rely on dawn to forcibly bring any and all conversation to a close. It's a little unfair, I know. I figure I'll warm up my courage in the bath, but as soon as that idea crosses my mind, Yoru nonchalantly speaks up. No, it's fine, we can talk here. You can go ahead and take your bath as we talk, Sayoko. Huh? Ah, uh, the tub's gonna overflow. Whoa. Enjoy. Urged by Yoru, I head to the full to the brim bathtub and plop my body into the water. After a second of thinking, I shut the curtain. Even I need my privacy sometimes, you know. The scent of fresh steam billows up from just below my face. Even when I'm in an unknown town in some faraway country, this alone remains the same. Even when I've become something as incomprehensible as a ghost. On the other side of the curtain, I can hear Yoru start brushing her teeth. I let out a long sigh. Hey Yoru, can you hear me? Hmm. <laughs> Yoru grunts. I guess that means she can hear me. Earlier today, Pacifica called me on the phone and said she had something important to talk about, so I should go over to her house. You should have woke me up so I could come too. I should have woken you up so you could come too? That's what I was thinking, but she said to come alone. So I guess it'd be less dangerous if something happened along the way and I was alone. Well, something did indeed happen, which is why I'm bringing this up now. It's a good thing that I didn't bring Yoru with me. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I didn't catch that, but you want to know what happened next, huh? Well, when I got to Pacifica's house, nobody was home, and like an idiot, I fell asleep, and when I woke up... 
I fall silent for a moment. Or rather, I can't find it in me to keep talking. I recall that moment of despair. I've got a thick skin and a thick skull to boot. At least, that's how I've always seen myself. But when I think about the despair and hopelessness I felt that moment I woke up, the back of my throat clenches, and I can't get any words out. Everything... burn... room. I... Perhaps catching on to my current state, Yoru stops brushing her teeth. The pathetic sound of my wheezing echoes through the bathroom. I lose track of the passage of time after that. The sound of rustling clothes mixes in with the sound of my, my heavy breaths. I lose track of the passage of time after that. The sound of rustling clothes mixes in with the sound of my heavy breaths. The curtain opens. Excuse me, can you scooch in a bit? Huh? A fully naked Yoru steps into the bathtub, pushing me a little to the side. The excess water gushes out with a hearty splash. It seems kind of wasteful. Um, why? We share a bed, so why not a bath, too? Let's lay together and bare our skin together, so we can lay bare the truth together. You know that, uh, showing skin to each other in a friendly way you thing you told me about, Sayoko? That's so weird. It might be weird, but I don't mean anything weird by it. You're overthinking things, Sayako. Huh. Anyway, let's move on. Whenever Yoru talks, a fresh but artificial mint scent tickles my nose. I don't remember telling her about that cultural tidbit. In fact, it feels more like a cultural tidbit between boys, if anything. But maybe I'm just upset that I can't remember telling her about it. Tell me everything that happened, I want to know. This bathtub wasn't made for two. Our legs are touching. I can feel her body heat, which is a little lower than the heat of the water. To keep my eyes from wandering, I look at my knees. Ah, I've got a scrape. When I woke up, everything was on fire. I was scared. So there are things even you're afraid of, huh, Sayoko? Of course there are. Lots of them. That must have been a scary experience. Yoru's hand moves underneath the surface. Yoru's hand moves underneath the surface. Her fingertips crawl around on my calf, like a ghost without a place to go. You've been saving guns underneath the bed, right? I've got a few, at least. Where is she going with this? I was organizing them earlier, and I found one gun that looked familiar. What do you mean? It was that big gun that Pacifica used the other day to shoot that Mo What's His Face guy. I do remember that gun. Pacifica swiped it off of Mort when he suddenly rushed into her house the other day. She did say, This thing's dangerous, so I'll keep it in the vault until it disappears by itself, didn't she? My fingertips feel cold, even though the water is so warm. It was an unusual gun for sure, but maybe this one's just a doppelgunner. They're probably just similar guns. I mean, they are mass-produced, after all. I got scared, thinking why Pacifica would give that gun to one of those hooligans. So scared, I couldn't mention it. Maybe she needed the money or something. Yeah, hopefully it's something like that. Okay, your turn, Sayako. Huh? You don't have to talk if you don't want to, but I think talking things through will help you feel a little bit better. Mm, that's my opinion as a specialist, at least. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? I'm fine, but I just suck at talking, so I might... I'm sorry. In slow, stuttered words, I managed to tell her what happened after that. How the chief happened to come to my rescue, and the unpleasant things he told me after that. If we were talking anywhere besides the bathtub, I might have withheld several details, or exaggerated the number of men threefold. And I definitely wouldn't have told her about what I heard from the chief. 
but the warmth of the water and the sensation of Yoru's skin make me feel so relaxed and, well, bare, that I can't help but bear the truth. I see. That must have been rough. I was scared, but just a little. Are you still scared? Just a little. I see. Yoru starts stirring, and for some reason, she strokes her wet fingers through my hair. I think I'll take a break from my medical practice for, for a while. I softly gasp at Yoru's declaration, because I had a feeling we'd have to talk about that once we got out of the bath. But... It took her so much work to get that job, I don't want to take it away from her. Even someone as dense as me can tell that Yoru thoroughly enjoys that job. But she might be the next thing to go. I was ready to protect her, even if it meant taking away the only joy in her life. Even if it meant making her hate me. I'm sorry. You have nothing to apologize for. But in the end, I didn't need to tell her to quit her job. I didn't have to make her hate me. It's such a relief, it feels like a weight's been taken off of my shoulders. Sayoko? Yes? I'm so sleepy. Yeah, me too. Yoru's droopy eyes look quite sleepy indeed. Mine must look just like hers. I see. The sun must be starting to rise beyond these small bathroom walls. Ghosts are creatures of the night and are therefore not allowed to be awake in the light of day. That's why we inevitably grow tired and fall asleep. I guess this is fine every now and then. We're too tired to even get out of the bathtub. Whether we like it or not, our senses seem to dissolve into the bathwater as we doze off to sleep. In the bath? It's a drowning hazard. And the water's gonna cool down. This situation reminds me of something. Oh, right. A double suicide. Death dissolves the boundary between the two of us as we melt into a puddle together and disappear. It's a fairly blessed feeling, to be honest. Bleak. It sure beats the feeling of decaying in isolation, at least. She's my other half. I have to protect her. At least that's how I feel. And just like that, it's morning, I think. <laughs>